Temples have always played a central role in Indian society. Apart from being focal points of education, art and culture, they also served as powerful energy centers. Ancient temples were built not as places for prayer, but as a vortex of energy where if people were receptive and willing, they could transform themselves in a very deep way. The entire art of building temples is not a mere art. It's a science. Every single facet of it, from the size of the idols to the direction and the sanctum. Temple architecture is a highly developed science. A temple is a miniature cosmos composed of the five elements and a preceding deity. A temple is an outgrowth of deity which has its own independent intelligence and from which energy is constantly radiating. In ancient times, temples were constructed at a place where Earth's magnetic wave passes through densely. Earth's magnetic equator is very close to Thumba in South India and the most magnificent temples were built here. Kasar Devi Temple is a famous Madurga temple in Uttarakhand is among the only three places which is a part of the well-known Van Allen Belt having huge electromagnetic particles from the Earth's crust. Not stopping at that, a temple with the floating pillars, temples built on sand, temples with growing rocks, temples with musical pillars, and the mighty Konak Temple, the wondrous Brihadeshwara Temple. The list will go on. Thinking of temples with all these wonders as mere religious places will be pure ignorance. Paying visits to the temple is not only for blessings, but also to get a calm and better mindset. In most of the temples, we find that the God statue is placed on a copper plate. It is widely believed that these copper plates absorb Earth's magnetic waves. Copper is the most reliable material of choice when shielding from radio frequencies because of its ability to absorb both magnetic and radio waves. Bells in all Hindu temples are not made up of just ordinary metal. It is made of various metals including cadmium, lead, copper, zinc, nickel, chromium and manganese. In Shilpa Shastra, it is mentioned that a bell should be made of panchadhatu or five metals. These five metals represent the panchabhuta. The proportion at which each one of them is mixed is a real science. Each of these bells is made to produce such a distinct sound that it can create unity of your left and right brain. The moment you ring that bell, the bell produces a sharp but lasting sound, which lasts for a minimum of seven seconds in a coma, good enough to touch your seven healing centers or chakras in your body. The moment the bell sound happens, your brain is emptied of all thoughts. A person regularly visiting a temple and walking clockwise around the main idol receives magnetic waves. This is a very slow process and a regular visitor will eventually start feeling the positive vibes. Temples are the place that contains pure vibrations of magnetic and electric fields with positive energy. In olden days, temples were built in such a way that the floor at the center of the temple was good conductor of these positive vibrations, allowing them to pass through your feet to the body. Hence, it is necessary to walk barefoot while you enter the core center of the temple. Indian temples also act as a place for more intellectual, artistic development. The temple complex housed schools, hospitals, and courts for general citizens, and its spacious halls were used for the recitation of Mahabharat and Ramayana. The temple maintained its sustenance through the income generated from cultivable land which was assigned to it by the king. It also provided livelihood for a large number of persons and greatly influenced the economic life of the community. Several scriptures on architecture and construction such as Vedas 
द ब्राह्मणास द उपनिषद्स एंड द भगवद गीता गिव सरप्राइजिंगली एक्यूरेट डिटेल्स ऑन प्रमाणा और मेजरमेंट टेक्निक्स मेटीरियल्स एंड अदर टेक्निकल स्पेसिफिकेशन ऑफ द इंडियन टेम्पल्स The technical structures in the field of architecture and sculpture, which give the basic layout for the construction of temples, are Shilpa Shastra and Vastu Shastra. The Manasara, also known as Manasa or Manasara Shilpa Shastra, is an ancient Sanskrit scripture on the Indian architecture and design, organized in seventy chapters and ten thousand slokas. It is one of the many Hindu texts on Shilpa Shastra, the science of arts. and crafts that once existed in first millennium ce the manasara is among the few hindu architecture scriptures whose complete manuscripts have survived into the modern age it is the most referred scriptures of southern india on architecture and iconography and the rules laid by these scriptures are rigidly followed for the temple construction it contains details about signs of accurately laying out the ground for a temple keeping in mind the astronomical and other cosmic movements and position the hindu architecture was among the first ones that established a relationship between the human figure and the system of proportion which was later studied by leonardo da vinci and lo corbusier a swiss french architect in the modular system of measurement it is based on the geometry of vastu purusha mandala in which the form of purusha was made to fit the abstract idea of square as the highest geometric form the basic form of vastu purusha mandala is the square which represents the earth the mandala is actually a square divided into smaller squares arranged in the form of a grid each smaller square depicts the area of the respective gods the most commonly used mandala is the square subdivided into 64 and 81 squares the vastu purusha mandala was the basis of the ground floor plan for all hindu temples the basic shape of the temple plan was the outermost ring of square was mandala from thickness of walls of main shrine the central four squares were reserved for the main deity the inner ring of 12 square form the walls of the garbhagriha and the next 16 to 28 form the pradakshina patha these simple divisions of square with permutation and combination became the base for the development of more complex temple compounds the available information of temple construction was collected from stone slabs metal plates palm leaves and manuscripts primarily both dravidian and nagara temple construction followed the same procedures up to the construction of the temple The slight variation occurred due to the variability of metals used for construction, the climate, or the availability of manual laborers for construction. The construction of a temple consisted of four classes. The first was thapati, main architect, versed in traditional science, mathematics, and shilpa shastras. Second was sutra grahin, who did work assigned by thapati. third was takshaka who did the carving and cutting of stone and the fourth was vardhakin the mason or carpenter who assembled all the pieces the construction of the temple was long and tremendous process which sometimes used to last for years the first stage was the planning of the temple where the sthapati with the team did selection of the site inspection of the site orientation and layout of the site The layout was done on the basis of Indian circle method and with the help of an instrument known as shankhu yantra. The nature of the main deity played a major role in determining the orientation of the temple. The stone which was to be used for construction must have some quality features such as even color, hard and perfect and pleasing to touch. The second stage was the carving of different parts of the temple. in which the takshaka directed the sculptors and shilpis to carve parts according to the drawings and specification the cutting and carving of the stone was done according to predefined shape the joining was also predecided and rough joinery was created while cutting the tools required such as hammers chisel were locally made and sharpened regularly 
The sketching was done either by charcoal piece or sharpened bamboo pieces. The polishing was done using stone bars. Ramps were constructed for the easy placement of heavy materials. The major joinery system used during the assembly of temples were mortise and tenon joints and lab joint. Peg is fixed between two mortises cut out in two different stones and was primarily used between two courses of masonry. The usual thickness of stone used for walls varied from 800 mm to 1200 mm. The column consisted of five parts as two parts of base, one part as shaft and two as the capital of the column. Also columns and beams for monolithic structures. The 22nd chapter of Brahma Samhita contains 107 sub chapters of technology and science which presents various aspects related to earthquake resistance of the buildings. One of the chief factors which provide these temples a considerable degree of earthquake resistance is their configuration as they provide a regular and direct route for material to come down such as the configuration of Dravida temple particularly of the main structure symmetrical forms are always preferred for earthquake resistance as asymmetrical forms produce eccentricity between the center of mass and center of rigidity which results in the torsion and tends to stress the concentration selection of symmetrical plans and layouts is important in seismic design the square is selected as basic unit of triangle as the principle controlling the layout which is concluded in strictly symmetrical plans earthquake forces are felt more at the ground level apart from carrying its own lateral loads it also carries the shear force of the upper floors which is similar to the downward building of vertical gravity loads structural plan density is defined as the total area of all vertical structural members divided by gross floor area for a rcc frame building it is 3 but it is as high as 47% for surya konark temple giving it earthquake resistance as the building grows taller its period increases with the change either upward or downward The period of building is not a function of height to depth ratio, story height, type of structural system and amount of distribution of mass. This construction technique is used in the construction of tall pyramidal temple roofs also called as gopuras or shikaras. The Indian temple is a depiction of macrocosm, the universe as well as the microcosm, the inner space. The idea behind the development of Hindu temples is to link man with God. Hence the temple with all its architecture and decoration and rituals is a place to get ultimate liberation which is the guiding philosophy of Hinduism.